Hello Universe, Chapter 4, Bells of the Buddhist Monastery. Twelve-year-old Kaori Tanaka, a proud Gemini, liked to tell people her parents were born in the high misty mountains of a samurai village. In truth, they were both second-generation Japanese Americans from Ohio. No matter, Kaori knew in her bones that they were meant to be born in the mountains. Sometimes people were just delivered to the wrong birthplace. How else could she explain her powers of second sight, which could only come from someplace magical? Kaori was mildly surprised to get a text from one of her clients, her only client, truth be told, on the first day of summer, particularly at 7.45 in the morning. But the night before, just as she was gliding to sleep, she'd had the vision of a hawk perched on a giant fence post. Only now she realized it must have been a vulture, not a hawk. And vultures started with V, just like Virgil's name. The connection couldn't have been clearer. She was already awake. <clears throat> she believed in waking up with the dawn whenever possible. When she heard the bells of a Buddhist monastery chime from her phone, a text message alert, she snatched it immediately and read Virgil's message. Hmm. This must be a matter of some urgency, she said from her bed. She liked to talk aloud when she was alone, just in case any spirits were listening. After replying to the text, Kaori lit a stick of incense, walked across her zodiac circle rug, and stepped into the hallway. She knocked gently on her younger sister's bedroom door. No one was awake yet, least of all seven-year-old Jen. Jen was a cancer. Morning wasn't her best time of day. Cancers were notorious night owls. Knocking is pointless, Kaori said. She opened the door and once again was assaulted and mildly offended by her sister's hot pink dresser, hot pink curtains, hot pink rug, and hot pink comforter. It was truly the room of a second grader, complete with teddy bears scattered all over the floor and plastic teacups and teapots toppled here and there. Jen was monstrously untidy. She also had a tendency to run through hobbies. Jen was determined to become the champion of something one day. It used to be hopscotch, then monkey bars, then checkers. There was a discarded recorder on the floor that she had once planned to master in a chapter book on Abraham Lincoln from the time she decided to become an amateur historian. A pink jump rope lay coiled like a snake near the foot of the narrow twin bed, evidence of her latest obsession. One day she'll mature, Kaori said to the spirits. She walked up to her sister and kicked the jump rope out of the way with a sigh of irritation. Jen had been jumping rope around the house for a week straight, driving everyone mad. She'd already broken three water glasses. Jen, Kaori said, poking her sister's shoulder, wake up. We have a client coming today and we need to prepare. Jen's eyelids fluttered but didn't open. Jen, Kaori poked a little harder. Her sister was wearing bunny print pajamas. Gross. Get up. Jen grumbled and pulled the comforter over her head. Kaori smoothed the front of her own pajamas, coal black with red trim, and said, Okay then, I'll just prepare the spirit stones alone. Jen tossed off the covers, eyes wide, her dark hair stuck up in every direction. You're using the spirit stones? I have reason to suspect I'll need them. Just a sense. But if you're too busy sleeping, I'm getting up, I'm getting up. And she did. Meet me in the spirit chamber, Kaori said. She waved toward Jen's pajamas. But get rid of the bunnies first. 